We're on our way to meet up with the Corona Mission Group again today to see what they're up to. We've just arrived in Danville on the western side of Pretoria. We're looking for the house where they're going to distribute the food from today. So let's see if we can find them. After we knew that our calling was going to be widows and orphans, we got an email to say that the founders of SAKS for Life uh, wants to go on pension and they're looking for a new managing director slash CEO to take over. And Russell actually got the email the first time, but when he saw the email, he just said, Sinead, this is you, you have to take this. At that stage, um, Russell was retrenched. He was looking for a job, and I was the breadwinner. So my salary was the only income into the house. Yeah. The founders of SAKS was looking for a woman, not a man. So if he would have applied, we would have missed the exactly. opportunity. So the founder received a message from the Lord saying, I'm going to send you a David um, to take over from you for SAKS. Yeah. And I didn't know that. So when she called me in Berlin to say, listen, are you interested? I said, to her, my dream is to be David. Um, without knowing that she was waiting for a David, I said, If the Lord tells me, Sinead, go, I will go. So the moment I said that, she knew I was the one. But God prepared me for for this time, for such a time as this. Because the founders were a couple that served for many, many years, and they were looking for a couple to hand over this ministry that God gave to them. So we took the leap of faith. I resigned that? six years ago. Six now. Years already. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we've learned a lot. Besides this lifehouse projects that we have, so we've got ten lifehouses over Pretoria, and then we also have a house for abandoned children and babies. We got a call for a little girl. She was one year and nine months old. We had to remove her from her parents and uh, she was sexually abused even at that age. And when we did medical tests for her, we also found that she's dead. And um, the very next day, I got a phone call from a doctor that said to me, I want to adopt and I think you've got the right child for me. And she said, no, but I know, I know God told me that I must call you. There's somebody there, there's a child there that is my child. And it's a little girl. And I said, but I do have a little girl. She was born prematurely and she's deaf. And this doctor started crying on the other side of the telephone and she said, it's my child. My eldest son was born prematurely and he's deaf. And I know exactly what to do with this child. And that's just Amazing one story. of the little miracles that, that we see every day. <laughs> we have fed so many people during this COVID time. The quest for food are streaming in. I can't say no. I mean, I believe God is good and he, he will provide. And we have not had to say no to one family. We are feeding more than 20,000 people every week.
found these guys here and what they're doing. So, um, I mean, first off, we were really moved by SAKs for Life and what they're doing for the people in South Africa. And we, at this point in time in COVID-19, we also wanted to help and make a uh, contribution towards feeding people. Uh, we're, we're very um, involved in sport and we feel sport is a great way to impact the youth. Uh, we're a God-led organization as well. Uh, we've been running a challenge with uh, some of South Africa's Springboks, the Springbok 7 Ladies, um, a couple of players from overseas, and we've been trying to get people to buy balls and make donations for SAKs for Life so we can also help to um, generate money and uh, help feed people. And what we're doing here today is we want to use the shadow ball. This is a shadow ball. It's a rugby training ball that lets you practice your passing and catching on your own. And that's important for rugby because the normal rugby balls are weird shape and you can't do that on your own. But um, it's also quite a powerful tool here because we're leaving balls with the safe house and there's an online training program so kids can now come we've set up a training zone and they can come and practice every day it's like a way for them to upskill the kids and also get connected with their community i mean we, we started with this with SAKS for life when the lockdown started and we went out to our first um, official handout last week and the impact it had on the boys there is amazing I,